good morning for those who are in Europe and good evening for those who are in California. I really appreciate everyone being here because this time during due to the time difference, it might be difficult for many of you to join, but uh, I'm really glad that so many people joined us today. And uh, as there are really many people joining us for the showcase, I would like to introduce some of the participants because we also have the uh, special guests. Well, I will start from the students. Uh, we have three students presenting today. Uh, first student is Laura. She'll be presenting first, uh, Laura Anderson. Uh, she interned for uh, Blue Up. Uh, and then uh, Nicholas from Sophia University and Anna from Loyola University Andalusia. They uh, interned for Camel and they uh, will be presenting followed by um, Anna about their experience at CAMEL. Uh, besides that, we have uh, plenty of my colleagues from the Beijing Center joining us today. Um, hi, Moritz. Okay, uh, Cindy and Alex, all my colleagues from the Beijing Center. Um, and also many of our TBC interns who actually also did internship at the Beijing Center. So they are very curious about your experience because they also had internship experience this semester. It's uh, Sumer, Aracho and uh, Apple, our three interns. And also we have uh, some special guests from Sophia University. Uh, could you please introduce yourself briefly <laughs> because I might not know all of your names. Hello, uh, I'm Hideo Takaoka from Sofia University. Uh, so today uh, I would like to, uh, I, uh, I'm interested in all, uh, all members presentation. So uh, thank you for today and uh, nice to meet you. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so hi, I'm Tomoe Yoshino from Sophia University as well. I think I met Maurice and Veronica via, um, you know, at, at the occasion of the Ashko AP meeting. Yes, yeah, so, hi. Hi. <laughs> so, yes, as Hideas mentioned, uh, we are very much looking forward to the students' presentation. And thank you very much for this great opportunity. And we have another colleague, Michiko. Hi, hello everyone. And um, my name is Michiko from Sofia University. And thank you very much for inviting us today to the showcase. Okay. Hi, Michiko. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us. There are so many people from Sofia University today. Uh, Nicholas is also a Sophia University student, so uh, yeah, four representatives from Sophia University. Really great to see you all. Um, and uh, uh, there's also one more um, student from our newly established uh, research platform at the Beijing Center, Zhejiao. Also, really appreciate Zhejiao for joining us uh, because uh, we really like when our TBC initiatives uh, collide and support each other. Uh, okay, so great. So we will start with the students' presentations and we we'll really appreciate if you could ask students some questions um, at the end of the showcase. So uh, maybe uh, after first student's presentation, you uh, can ask some questions if you have any right away, but uh, just you can also save some questions to the end and we can discuss more of their internship experience, especially our TBC interns are encouraged to ask some questions because you might have uh, something to share about your um, experience. Uh, so now I'd like to invite Laura to share her first presentation uh, from her internship at Blue Up. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura, and this is my workspace. Uh, so I'm coming in from California. I live near Los Angeles, um, south of Los Angeles, and uh, I am a student at Cal State University Fullerton, uh, which is right next to Disneyland. 
And our mascot is Tuffy the Titan, an elephant. So you can see us here all pointing to the Titan sign. Um, I recently graduated, kind of. This is my last week of university uh, with my bachelor's degree in accounting and finance. And my plan for after graduation is to study for the CPA exams, which I hope to take and pass over the summer. So besides accounting and finance, I'm also super interested in studying Chinese. Uh, so at my university over the past few years, I volunteered a lot of my time um, in the Chinese studies department, whether it be like hosting calligraphy workshops or um, Chinese studies panels and interviewing guest speakers or just reaching out to other students who are learning Chinese um, and connecting with them. So this is a huge hobby of mine and I'm really passionate about it. Um, but my major is accounting. So I was hoping to kind of after graduation, go into the business world and maybe find an opportunity for myself where I can oops, combine my interests um, between accounting and Chinese. My internship through the Beijing Center was with GlueUp. GlueUp is a CRM platform, so that's uh, customer resource management. And they're an international company. They started, um, they were actually called Event Bank when they started around 2013. And it was like an online platform where people could manage all of their events. But the company grew to the point where it became an all-inclusive platform. So not only managing events, but also um, managing, managing your contacts. Um, you can host uh, like speed networking, you can do all of your marketing through the GlueUp platform. So it became this all-inclusive platform. So instead of Event Bank, they ended up changing their name to GlueUp, which is supposed to mean like gluing your connections together. Um, and they do have a Chinese platform. If you wanna take a look here, uh, the office I worked for was in Washington DC. So I, I didn't really have an interaction with the Chinese part, but you can see the Chinese name for the GlueUp company is Sui Lai Lian Jie. So <laughs> originally I thought maybe it was going to be something like Xiao Shui Sheng, but obviously that wouldn't really sound very good to the Chinese market. So Sui Lai Lian Jie is like future link. I think it makes a lot more sense. So my virtual office in Washington DC, I had three supervisors who I worked with and reported to, uh, Carl, Nertach, and Raphael. And a fun fact about Nertach, She's in charge of social media marketing, marketing, and she actually has her own YouTube channels, one in Turkish and one in English, and she's her own influencer, so I thought that was super cool. Um, she lived in China for a few years, so I watched a bunch of her videos um, in China and was able to connect with her about that. So what did I actually do at my internship? Um, I mostly worked with Nertach in social media marketing. Um, we, I, I used the GlueUp platform, of course. So I got to create events and um, email campaigns. We used Microsoft Teams mostly for communications, which I've used previously. So that was comfortable for me. And then I used this platform called Upfluence, which you can see in the upper right-hand corner. Um, that's like a, a huge archive, a huge database of influencers. So you can search through them and depending on your search criteria, find people that you maybe want to hire. Um, we also used Quip, which is the lower right-hand corner. Quip is like um, your online document sharing platform. Um, it's kind of like Google Docs or Hongxun Wendong, uh, just like a really basic document sharing platform. But GlueUp, Upfluence, and Quip were all new to me. So that was cool being able to use these new platforms. Um, and also speed networking. So I've done speed networking before, um, but I did get to do it again through my internship. And uh, if you've never done speed networking before, it's pretty stressful. It's like you're in this virtual room because this is all virtual um, with a bunch of other people and you get matched with somebody and you have like three minutes or five minutes to talk to them and network and like make a really good first impression. and even though I'm a really social person, I'm really extroverted, I love, 
I love getting to know people, but that something about like the timer at the top is really stressful. So having this experience as part of my internship made me feel a lot more comfortable with speed networking. So I think that was probably one of the biggest uh, takeaways, like one of the greatest advantages of my internship was being able to do this and just get more comfortable with it. Um, another, <laughs> a big challenge of my internship was the time differences. Um, so Glue Up is an international company. They were having speed networking events in the Philippines, which is in the GMT plus eight time zone. And I live in the GMT minus eight time zone. Um, so you can see uh, in the upper right hand corner, some events were at 12 p.m., some events at 5 p.m. So I would have to think, OK, 12 p.m. for them, subtract 16 hours. That's 8 p.m. for me the night before. Um, I used this app, World Time Buddy, to calculate time differences for meetings and stuff. And also, I just have this widget on my phone. So it's really easy for me to check the time in Beijing just on a, on a whim. And fortunately, Philippines and Beijing are in the same time zone. So Things like that helped the apps um, and the quick math. But yeah, the time zone was a big difference. And also I'm in California, the office was in Washington DC. So even just like the daily work, uh, there was a three hour time difference. Um, my biggest contact with China was through the Beijing Center. I had a Chinese tutor, her name is Vivian. I'm super grateful for her. And we would meet, we've been meeting once a week for an hour. Um, and just kind of talking in Chinese. She'll help me learn new words and kind of correct my speech so it sounds more natural and less foreign. Um, so I was really grateful for her and also really grateful she let me take this picture and she looks really pretty. Um, also, since my internship was through the Washington DC office, but I still wanted to get that immersive China experience, um, part of my internship was reading news articles and just like going through the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Entrepreneur Magazine, Business Insider, and kind of um, getting idea of what's the news and then writing articles um, to post on LinkedIn. Um, so sometimes uh, the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal have a Chinese edition. Um, so I would just, switch it to Chinese real quick and, and maybe read some articles in Chinese just to kind of give myself a little bit more of an immersive experience. Um, but once again, the biggest immersive experience I had was with my tutor, Vivian. She was really amazing. And um, something I really valued from my experience with her was that she's working and studying and I'm working and studying. So we got to spend a lot of time comparing the differences between her experience in China versus my experience in the United States. Also, of course, Dr. Moser's lessons from the Beijing Center um, were super fun. And um, his, just his knowledge, like the depth of his knowledge and his passion also helped me learn so much um, about China and Chinese culture and kind of just make those connections. Um, so, to sum up my experience, yes, of course, I would absolutely love to have the opportunity to work in China or with a Chinese company. Um, I put my WeChat QR code there because I know a lot of us have never met before, or maybe we have, but we haven't connected. So uh, if you wanna be friends and chat, or if you just wanna network, yeah, feel free to add me on WeChat there. And I hope that we can have more communication in the future. So does anybody have any questions for me? Okay, thank you, Laura, so much for your presentation. It's uh, great to learn about your experience. That was kind of also very international, both uh, in the US and in China, um, as much as the pandemic allows us. Um, if there are any immediate questions, uh, everyone is feel, people can feel free to ask them now, or we can just wait till the end and ask them at the end. Um, all right, then we can maybe just uh, have some questions at the end. Uh, thank you, Laura. Do you mind if I share your QR code in our uh, TBC group chat? So maybe our interns can add you later. Would that yeah, be yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, great.
uh, yeah, thank you so much for your presentation and we will proceed for the next presenters. And actually we have uh, some more guests joining us. Um, I've seen some um, supervisors from uh, Camel, right? Um, if you could just briefly say something to us and introduce yourself, that would be great. Um, okay, maybe then uh, the students can introduce the supervisors later, so uh, we'll see. So actually for Laura, the internship concludes in December, uh, but for Nicholas and Anna who intern at Camel, the internship extends to January because we accept students on a rolling basis for the virtual internship program. Um, so they continue the internship in January because they joined a little bit later. Uh, but the internship showcase is now uh, mostly because of the Christmas break and because we want to gather everyone together for uh, the showcase and we're grateful for everyone being here now. Um, so now we proceed to a presentation of Nicholas. Uh, Nicholas, could you please um, share your screen and introduce yourself and maybe introduce your supervisors who just joined us recently for this presentation. Yes, thank you, Veronica. So let me start my screen. Uh, can you all see my screen? Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, so um, to, uh, I'm gonna so I'm going to um, I'm going to show my experience uh, in this internship that has been introduced by the Beijing Center. So. A bit self introduction. My name, my full name is Nicholas Raditya Putrawisesa. You can call me Nicholas if the second and third name is a bit difficult for you to spell. So I'm a second year master's student at Sofia University Graduate School of Science Technology in Japan. My focus study is on the plant molecular biology with research focus on how, uh, to, how to make plants able to adapt to changes that caused by climate change, such as high temperature, drought, or maybe even like reduce of temperature and those kind of things. And in terms of like industry, my interest is on biotech, agricultural, and chemical industry. So a bit about Sofia University is a private university uh, in Tokyo, Japan. And the thing is that uh, in Japan, it's not called Sofia University. So if you go to Japan and then you ask, uh, ask like where is Sofia University, people won't understand. People know Sofia University as Jochi Daigaku. Uh, so based on the kanji that you read right here. So Sofia University is founded by the Society of Jesus or Jesuits. So it's kind of the same as maybe some of our the other students, my other friends right here, and also on TBC as well, who also founded by Jesuits. And uh, the Center of Global Education and Discover, sorry, and Discovery at Sofia is the one that introduced me about this program by GBC, this internship program. And from there, I get to know GBC and able to join this internship. So the company where I intern is actually even thought that it is said that I am uh, internship at Kamal. Actually, I entered at Kamakem, which is a subsidiary to Kamal Group. So it is specialized in the procurement of various kinds of chemicals for mining, industries, water treatment, and other special needs, maybe disinfectant, agricultural. And it has like 10 years of experience with various multinational companies, with clients such as Unilever, Chemsol, Goldblatt, and with various countries as well, such as Nigeria. South Africa, Pakistan, India, and so on. So in Kamakem, uh, I, uh, I was guided by uh, my manager and uh, my ma uh, by two supervisors, I will say. The first one is my manager, his name is MSC. And the second one is a fellow intern as well. Her name is Zoha, and they are actually the one that guide me and Anna throughout all of these internships. So what do I do during this internship? So I was placed in the sales and marketing department of Kamakem. And my responsibility 
is to maintain the, and improve the content of Kamogem's website. That includes like blogs, FAQs, and maybe like a guide to chemical and stuff like that. And my tasks include, for example, to revise the content that has been write, written by writers that we have, basically research like topics to make a new content in the, uh, in the chemical industry, and then come up with like improvement in various content. And if you see right here, this is like one of the blocks that both me and Anna are working on, which is about the, uh, the rules of handling chemicals in China and like, like what's the rules to import or export chemicals. So why do I join this internship? So my study is very research focused and think myself, I want to work in an R&D sector. So, but however, I, I want to, uh, to diverse my experience in other fields, sales uh, and maybe uh, consulting, marketing, and therefore, I would like to join this internship. So, of course, other than that, I want to know the culture of different companies. So, actually, like I have like experience in doing like a small internship in Japan in one of the chemical companies here. And of course, I want to know to have experience in working online, which is, seems to be what our most people are doing right now. And as you can see right here, this is like the picture of me doing my task while waiting for a reaction in my lab. So how's my experience? So overall, it's a very positive experience. And what I learned is that uh, various tools uh, for, market, uh, for digital marketing, for example, the term of SEO, which is search engine optimization, which is like in like a, a layman's term, I would say it's like, how to make sure that your content and what you want to sell on the internet get pushed by search engines such as Google or Bing or Yahoo or maybe Baidu in case in China. Market research, like searching the trends of like a lot of like uh, in industries such as maybe like what's the chemical that is popular this week or this month. And then content creation, for example, other than the blogs, I also work on like YouTube description, the narration on YouTube, like what people are going to say on YouTube and maybe how to improve it. And of course, to work online and to cooperate with people with different backgrounds and different experience. So for example, these are the tools that I use. First, uh, there's Google Analytics, maybe Laura also used this, so this is the to see like, for example, like the traffic of your website, how many clicks that you got, what's the bounce rate, like how many people that visit your website. SpyFu, which is like to search keywords and also to search the performance of other companies, maybe your rivals. Jarvis is basically a tool that helps content writing. It's an AI that, uh, that improve and even able you to make a content or, uh, or blog, for example. And of course, Google with a lot of their tools, such as maybe analytics again, there's also Google search console and Google key, uh, keyword planner. So issues, there are of course some issues as well. In terms of time management, uh, there's like a lot of work, of course, with a short period of time and combine that, I need to balance that with a lot of things that I do for some of my research, my classes, my part-time jobs and many other things such as doing taxes and all of that. And of course, with that, uh, there's also a problem of like, there's a lot of things that need to be learned in a short period of time, such as maybe like the terms of like SEO, how to strategize, how to, uh, for example, how to use a particular uh, tools, for example, and how do I manage to overcome it? And in a short answer, I would say I endure. That's it. That's a short answer. I endure. But a long answer, what I did is that I made a daily task. Like, what do I going to do this day? On that, that's not just limited to on internship stuff, but also things that I want to do today. Maybe there's a research classes. So if you can see on your right, there's like the list that I did 
that I do with the sticky notes. And basically, schedule wise, I usually do like my research work at the day and then do my internship work at night or sometimes vice versa. And sometimes with a lot of work, I need to do some works during the weekend and also multitasking, as you see in my previous picture, I'm doing, you know, uh, my internship job while, you know, waiting for a reaction. And in terms of like a lot of learn, I, I of course need to learn by myself. I need to do my own research, to ask questions. And of course, sometimes like uh, you're gonna get criticized, like you got like very little to learn, but you just need to accept it and then you learn from it and then just move on. So other than that, of course, that there are things that helped me through, through all this internship. So first is uh, a comedy podcast. It's usually the podcast that I like, uh, like watch or listen while enjoying my, well, no, not while enjoying, not while working on my internship stuff or my research stuff. This is the one that I, actually watch called Bad Friends. I mean, if you're interested, you can just go ahead. And if you see right there, it's my best friend, I would say. It's Asahi Wanda Kiwami uh, with low sugar. It's, <laughs> it's a canned coffee that I usually bought, uh, you know, from uh, bought like twice a day, just uh, during, during the morning and during at night. And yeah, I mean, I'm, Kidding a little bit. It's a it's a different brand that I'm drinking right now, but yeah, that's the brand that I usually drink. So even though that there's like a lot of things to do, there's a lot of work uh, with the internship. I still able to keep up with my research despite all of that. I still help. I able to help write an academic journal by, uh, with my professor and my fellow uh, lab mates and his uh, co-worker as well. I see able to fulfill my job as a teaching assistant here in Sofia University. I help, uh, help one of the teachers here in Sofia. And of course, to prepare and doing JLPT or Japanese language placement test, which is what I required to find a job here in Japan. And I did this last week and I think I could pass the test. So. And yeah, if you see here, just like my picture with the plants that I taken care of, they're weird and even thought that there's a lot of things to do, they are doing fine. So in short, it is the experience that I have. There's like a lot of ups and downs, but overall I enjoyed this experience and I hope if there's like a chance for me to maybe have like another internship or maybe like have another experience with TBC or maybe with uh, come up in as well. I am gladly to accept it. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Nicola, so much. Thank you for enduring so many things and actually for a really great balance between those things because um, you really uh, participated in all our activities and uh, did your internship well. So uh, your balance, you actually reached some kind of balance, maybe the coffee helped you with that um, <laughs> I don't know um, and of course um, after you complete the program you are all considered as uh, TBC alumni so if you ever come to Beijing or if you want to participate in any other program activities you can keep following us on social media or check our website we'll be always happy to see you virtually but even happier if we have a chance to see you in person uh, one day so uh, Thanks, Nicholas. Um, uh, we'll have some questions to you also at the end after Anna's presentation. Um, and uh, now we'll proceed with uh, Anna's presentation also about her experience at CAMEL. Uh, and though you interned basically at the same department, I'm pretty sure that uh, your experience was not the same. Um, and now we'll see how and we'll learn some more other things about the CAMEL. So Anna, could you please share your screen and introduce yourself? Yes, sure. Um, okay. Can you see it? Not yet. Try. Not yet? Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. 
That's okay. Okay, I can see your screen now. Okay. Um, well, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for being here today. I will skip some parts uh, regarding the description of Kamal, for example, as Nicholas uh, did a great summary. Uh, my name is Ana Maria Cruz Chavez, but you can call me Ana. <laughs> um, I study at um, I study at Loyola University, uh, which is a Jesuit university located in my, my home city, Sevilla. Uh, I believe it has some partnership with Sofia University as well. So yeah, um, my bachelor's degree is international relations, and I major in security and foreign policy. Currently, I um, only focused on my thesis, uh, which is the only thing I have left to become an internationalist. Um, so yeah, I've always been interested, well, always, I've been interested in Japanese uh, culture and lifestyle since I was more or less 14. And an experience that absolutely changed my life was uh, a trip I did to South Korea when I, in 2018. So I fell in love with Korean culture as well. And I was certainly reassured that I would love to live uh, in Korea or in East Asia uh, someday. So um, yeah, uh, before this internship, I have also done a previous one. Uh, it was at the program for the reception and integration of asylum seekers at the Red Cross in Spanish Red Cross. And I love this so much that uh, until today, I am an intern there. It's a very fulfilling um, job, so I loved it. Um, as for Kamakam, uh, we already know it is a subsidiary of Kamal Group. And just to familiarize ourselves with, with them a little bit more with Kamakam, um, they supply high quality chemicals around the world. Um, these chemicals are mainly used in the oil industry, gold recovery in the mining industry, and for water purification. Um, their mission, for example, is uh, the, what they want to achieve, certainly. So they want to facilitate international trade, grow a multi, multilingual and multicultural team, which it already is. And they want to create a profitable business uh, opportunities. Their vision is what they want to become in the future. Uh, they want to become a first class global chemical supplier. And their values are problem solving, business um, integrity, accountability, and an ethical uh, workplace and behavior. So I'm very glad that today we have here as our guests, MC and Soha. Uh, we work alongside a great team of professionals. Uh, Soha trained us, for example, the buyers, the editors, the sales team, and and of course, I have to thank Nicholas because he's been there every day, every single day to help me. So yeah, I'm very grateful for him. Um, as a part of the marketing team, I, uh, we can consider us ourselves a bit of SEO strategist. Um, we help to optimize our pages and content online according to how the search engine crawlers work. So this might be a little bit difficult, but the, these are the robots inside the, the search engine. So we not only create uh, content readable for people that are doing their search for humans, but we also have to create uh, good content that can be read by these robots so they can analyze our content and show it to people. If they cannot read it, it's not really useful. So uh, specifically, I am in charge of social, social media platforms. I work every day and post in LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, to manage all of them, uh, I use Soho Social, which is this one. I can show it bigger later if you want. Uh, is this a platform that helps me to uh, track the performance of all our posts, schedule them, for, for example, we want to post in a certain time zone 
that um, I may be asleep when uh, we want to post that so I can schedule them. Um, so yeah, and this is Kamakem's uh, LinkedIn. You are very welcome to follow it. It will help me a lot. <laughs> uh, so move, moving on, um, as an internationalist, uh, I am passionate about Asia, as I said before. So I did not hesitate to, to apply for this internship when uh, the, um, uh, at Loyola, they offered me this opportunity as I desire to work in East Asia someday. Uh, this will be a great opportunity for me to familiarize with um, the um, Chinese work ethics, the business sector. So um, I, of course, I did not hesitate to choose it. Um, uh, as uh, I want to, to um, I did not intern, uh, to major in international business, but I kind of wanted to experience this to properly choose uh, my, my career path uh, in the future or in the present, uh, to choose it properly, to, to, to experience every, every opportunity that international relations gave me and properly choose in the future. So uh, then I must thank, I must thank, of course, she, she couldn't come, but Laura Carmona from Loyola Employment Service, uh, she, she wrote me and she encouraged me to, to apply for this. And it is great because this, uh, this service not only um, mm, tracks you uh, academically, but also your, your likes. So it is very personal that I love uh, Asian culture. So I really uh, thank that, uh, thank her for that. Uh, yeah, uh, the skills acquired and the, the problems I had to overcome. Um, at first I, I was a bit overwhelmed, overwhelmed, to be honest, because I had to learn a whole new profession. I studied international marketing but it has, it's not really related to marketing, digital marketing. So uh, I made a great effort to learn all the concepts real fast and um, integrate them to be able to work with them. So I also learned uh, good time management skills. Since my prior priority is to finish my thesis, I had to be time efficient and not to waste time. So uh, I also came to realize that I love teamwork because um, we have to always be in touch in Kamakim to not to overlap our efforts and therefore waste our time. So for example, uh, the sales team could uh, reach out to every person that uh, interact with us in LinkedIn. But if I do, I first, uh, I, I did an Excel, I, uh, gather all the all these profiles, and I select the people that they may, may be interested in, for us to not to waste our efforts and in being time efficient always. So uh, regarding the question, uh, I don't want to live in Asia. I would love to live in Asia, and at least have a, an experience of one or two years. So I'd like to further my studies in East Asia foreign policies and economic growth. I'm still in between politics and economics. So I think I'll figure it out uh, along this year, this coming year. Um, so uh, that is why I hope to be accepted, accepted in a master's degree that has international internship so I will be able to move maybe to a Asian country to do this internship. Um, I'm willing also to experience an absolute cultural immersion and learn as much as possible. So I kind of want to, to, to experience this. Then regarding time management, um, uh, I really hard have to till this day a uh, hard time managing my time. Uh, to be honest, I get distracted a lot. 
and it's very easy for me to to be time efficient so this is my workplace in the in the right and i will always recommend having a, your own space to isolate and concentrate properly this is very important every morning i write down all my tasks everything they ha i have to do for for that day and i tick them as long as they are done so for this i these two agendas that you can see in the middle are essential for me I, uh, in the first one, I write everything I have to do for the day. And in the other one is a bit uglier, but uh, it's very useful because I write everything related to work to come out. Uh, I write down everything from our meetings. I'm that kind of person. So yeah. Um, also our content plan was a huge, huge help too. It was at first very uh, quite difficult to cope with that because I come, I come out, they want us to write everything in this big uh, spreadsheet. But it turned out to be amazing to, to keep up with, the, with their work and be more efficient. So in the left, you can see how I really look at 7 a.m. in our meetings, because in Spain, it's always 7 a.m. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I work in my pajamas. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, then uh, finally, uh, as for the cultural differences, I was very surprised that uh, Soha, I have to thank her specifically because she put a lot of effort in our training. She meets with us three times a week uh, and he gives everything to, to make sure we are doing well, we understand everything, we are not lost and we know how to deal with every platform. So this is truly amazing. Um, also, I love that we have absolute creative freedom to strategize and implement things since our platforms are quite small still, I'm working on that. Um, um, we can try new things every, every week. And finally, the best part is that we can choose our own, uh, our own working hours since uh, we have to meet certain objectives. Uh, it does not really matter if we do it at 2 a.m. in the morning, eh, as long as they are finished when they have to be finished. So, um, yeah, uh, wait, I have one thing left. Uh, uh, regarding Chinese culture, I was uh, very glad that we we had David Moser as our teacher. At first, I did not know uh, how important is his figure in Chinese media and the research uh, environment, but he was an amazing teacher. And to mention a few things that really I, I really loved is to know how in China, artists and people that devote their lives to knowledge are highly regarded. For example, Confucian values and Taoist values were uh, very beautiful to get to, to know uh, the self-cultivation, the role models, hierarchy, harmony, harmony, and social cohesion. These are things that were truly amazing to learn. And Chinese media, Chinese uh, language was uh, a great experience that maybe was the, the thing that I was looking forward to most, to be honest, when doing this internship. So I'm very happy for that. I'm very grateful. And that's it. Uh, thank you to the Beijing Center, to Loyola University and the employment se sector uh, service, of course. So thank you, muchas gracias. <laughs> okay, thank you, Anna, so much, and uh, special thanks for your flexibility with the program because uh, it did happen a lot for you that um, it is 7 a.m. for you, like it is today. Um, so, uh, like Chinese say, Xinku. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, Okay, I think we can proceed to the uh, Q and A part. Uh, I saw already some question in the chat box. Let me just uh, help to read it out loud. The question goes to all three presenters, so maybe 
um, whoever wants to answer first, you can just go first. Uh, does VIP make an impact in your studies and career planning? Oh, actually, it's a great question because you all introduced your majors and your internship doesn't always align with your major. So did it influence your career path in any maybe tiny way or did it help you to shape your future career better? So do you have any ideas on that? All right, I think I, would, I can answer first. Well, in terms of studies, well, you know, I'm studying about plants and then studying about marketing. So it doesn't really, any, doesn't really help. But uh, in terms of career planning, I mean, yes, it basically like it fulfill, kind of fulfill my objective, which is like broadening my experience, get to know what was out there other than what I actually do all the time. Because like my studies is like very research-based and I get to know like what is digital marketing. I get to know like what is the work in marketing in sales going to be like. And yes, it also like with this, it's also like broadened my option in basically trying to pursue my career here in Japan. Maybe like other than just looking for an R&D type of uh, occupation, I may be like able to like look for for example, like sales marketing or maybe like consulting jobs or something that aligns with that. So yes, I think in terms of career planning, it helps like broaden my knowledge and just basically like seeing other options that is available out there. Okay, glad to hear that. Thank you, Nicholas. Um, any other thoughts? Sorry, I don't really know what's what the meaning of VIP in this context. So it's a virtual internship program. That Sorry. Doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, it did make a great impact uh, since we are in the situ pandemic situation. Both of my internships has been virtual, so uh, it is also a great opportunity to experience different kind of sectors and and choose a proper uh, career having a lot of broaden you you broaden your opportunities so it's it's great i think for me it hasn't necessarily changed my path um, but it's definitely helped me build skills that i'm going to use along the way okay Thank you. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? You can just uh, speak up. Here's a question from my side, from Moritz. May I? Yeah, sure, please go ahead. Also a question to, to the three of you, whoever wants to, to try and answer. Well, on, um, on a, in a broader picture, what TBC somehow is trying is to foster mutual understanding between China and what is not China. Um, do you think that um, there was something you gained in terms of mutual understanding, understanding your own culture better or understanding Chinese culture better? And if you look at that intercultural experience you made, which aspect do you think is worth exploring more? All right, I think I can answer first. So since that the internship is online, in at least in my perspective, like I don't see there's like a lot of uh, get to know with the, you know, the Chinese culture, for example, in terms of like the internship. So internship with, since that uh, come on is basically uh, a country that, uh, no, a company that is focused on like, uh, you know, ex uh, exporting, chem uh, exporting chemicals to other countries. So, and I don't feel the, what is it, that there is some, uh, uh, you know, like some sort of like get to know about like Chinese culture or maybe Chinese, like, uh, what is it, company, uh, what is it, like uh, company culture? Because like the things, 
because like the work that we do is an online work. And so that at least that's from my, my perspective, but in terms of like the other side, uh, side of it, which is like, for example, the, the classes about the Chinese culture, like, yes, I think that from there, I get to know more about like Chinese culture, about like why uh, Chinese have these kind of policies, like why they, you know, think in this way, different compared to maybe like people that came from the, from the West, for example. So I would say like in terms of, I think that because of this internship is in, is online, I think that that's kind of like blunt the, uh, the, you know, get to know about Chinese culture experience, at least for me. So what to improve, I think, and it also like depends on like the company on the what are you working working with so i think i think like i couldn't give like a, a direct answer about that unfortunately but in terms of like going to know more about chinese culture the classes is i think is the one that helps more compared to the internship Okay, uh, do you have any other thoughts about this or that, that's all the answer we have? Well, thank you, Nicholas. I think this was pretty comprehensive answer to, or it's a bit difficult question. Uh, okay, thanks. Um, I also have some questions from uh, my side, if I may. Um, well, so actually at the end of your industry world, it's not exactly the end, but after this virtual experience and probably also experienced a lot of uh, virtual studying in your universities. So what would you be, what would be your preference for the future? Would you prefer to work virtually or you would still like, you know, like full in office offline experience? What do you think about it? If I may answer first. I, uh, these uh, experiences we've been having, not only the, the Beijing Center, but since uh, from two years ago, that made me realize that I would, if I could choose, I would never do it virtually. Um, it, 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 it is hard for me because um, to be absolutely honest, I have to do my tasks every day and I write it down. Everything is perfect, everything is laid down. But if, for example, I have the laundry, I focus more on the physical things and go to do the laundry before doing my tasks. And I absolutely hate it because um, it makes me maybe uh, if I um, should finish at uh, 2 p.m. Spanish time, I end up finishing at 5 p.m. And I, I, I'm, I'm not meant for this, but yeah doing this kind of experiences are always amazing. Uh, it's not for me. <laughs> about you, Laura? What do you think about it? I liked the virtual internship experience. Um, I can see it's really distracting at times. Um, but I also multitask. I don't know. I feel like I can be productive still um, in that situation. And sometimes in, when you're just doing an internship anywhere, you kind of have to wait. Like, I, I don't know. I've done a lot of internships where, not a lot of internships, but I've been in situations where I ask I, and I, and I just have to wait for my supervisor to give me direction. So I'm kind of just sitting there for a while. Um, so in that kind of situation, the virtual setting is nice because then, you know, I can fill my time preparing something else. Um, so the, the virtual part, I'm not opposed to, but of course I would rather be in China. <laughs> uh, thank you. How about you, Nicola? Do you think you will be able to endure all your activities if they were not partly virtual? Um, I think in my ex uh, experience is that the the the, uh, 
the advantage of like being doing the internship online, a virtual internship is that most of the time, uh, that of course you can do it anywhere you want. Like I'm doing it right now in my lab. So, but the thing is that uh, it also like depends on like the, the task, like sometimes that uh, since that uh, the, the thing is the internship is online, it's basically not, so for example, like if I'm doing like internship, like in an actual office, that means that I'm gonna dedicate myself through that all out through that all hour in the office to do internship tasks. Well, in this case, like when doing the, doing it online, that means that it's basically like, for example, what I do do right now is basically like, oh, now I get to do internship tasks with my research and my part time job and so on. So, at least for me, is that doing internship online is like basically just add another layer of work that you need to do compared to like, if you're actually like, for example, like I, I used to do part-time job in like a restaurant, for example. So during those hours, like from like 5 p.m. to 11 p.m., you just dedicate yourself through that work. So after that, the work is done. Like you don't, you don't need to worry about the work that you need, that you need to do. At least that's uh, my experience. But if it's online, that means that, oh, now, you need to do this while also do your other stuff. So yeah, that is like the, the downside, I guess, in terms of the, doing doing the internship online. But whether like I want to do work online, I would say, again, maybe like I would say, if my work is going to, if uh, I think like, if I took this internship maybe during my vacation or maybe during my, I don't know, like summer break or spring break or something like that, I think I, uh, the experience will be way more satisfying. I would say it will be more positive experience because I will gonna spend like my whole hour, my whole time just to, you know, do this internship compared to what I do right now, just like jumping through all all the other tasks that I need to do. Well, thank you, but at least you've been very productive with that and. Uh... Well, I still think that virtual experiences are here to stay, even if the pandemic is completely over. Many organizations already adapted to the new model. And we can see this in the example of uh, CAMEL. Uh, it's already like a fifth cohort of the students uh, of virtual internship program. And uh, I can see a lot of changes and improvement in intern management and training. So many thanks uh, for that to CAMEL. Um, and, uh, okay, so are there any other um, last questions to our uh, virtual industry program students, maybe from our current interns, or maybe from our guests from Sophia University, any, any questions? Okay, thank you. We have uh, no question. And, uh, we appreciate you and the uh, uh, company. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you. So the uh, last thing I would like to ask everyone before we complete this showcase, uh, could you please, if your camera is off, if it's possible, turn it on. Uh, if it's already on, just look in your camera so I can take a group screenshot of everyone. So we'll remember this showcase by um, yeah, our group screenshot. Okay, so one, two, three, Tiazu. Tiazu means eggplant in Chinese, and it's used like a cheese when you take a photo. So let's try one more time. One, two, three, Tiazu. Okay, great. Should be very good. Uh, so actually, this is already, a, as I mentioned, a fifth cohort of virtual industry program students joining the showcase. And in my experience, it's the most diverse cohort in terms of your locations and backgrounds, because we have here students from 
California to Japan, very big time difference. And also with uh, Spain in the middle, which made some program activities scheduling a little bit difficult, but we proved that it was possible. So again, thank you all so much for your flexibility. And also it's really great to see all of you having your different backgrounds, like Laura, you're, you're from California, but you actually been to China and you speak Chinese really well. Um, and um, Anna, who's interested in uh, Southeast Asian culture, but never been in this region, but got the chance to tap in these experiences a little bit. Um, and Nicholas, who actually lives in uh, Southeast Asia, well, in, in Japan currently. Um, so uh, I'm really great that we can experience this diversity all together. And uh, uh, well, actually this time, it's not really goodbye to you because uh, we'll still be working together throughout January and December with some of you. So your program completion certificates will be sent to you later when you actually complete all your internship and you will still have some questions, uh, some lectures in January. So we'll still meet many times. So I cannot say that it's a bittersweet goodbye. Uh, it's not because we continue working together, uh, which I'm happy to do with you further. Um, and uh, I would like also to thank all our guests today and uh, my colleagues from the Beijing Center and our interns for supporting us for the showcase. And even though it's not the end of your internship experience at the Beijing Center, I think so far it's been great. Um, and um, I'm glad to see you performing so well in your internships. So thank you all. <laughs> All right, so have a nice uh, day or night or morning, wherever you are, and um, uh, I'll stay in touch with you and please uh, follow our other activities in our social media.